Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. In the Spirit, you've got the fullness of the Godhead in you bodily. Your spirit is full of joy, happiness, anointing, power, faith all of the time. On today's broadcast, Andrew will be sharing the four essential elements of Christian maturity, which he taught live at the 2022 Washington, D.C. Gospel Truth Conference. And now, here's Andrew. The Scripture says we have to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, Now we only know in part, and we prophesy in part, but someday that which is perfect has come. We will know all things, even as also we are known. You, your soulish realm isn't changed yet. So your body and your soul have not changed. They may have been influenced and they may be in the process of change, but it doesn't conform to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So what is that talking about? The only thing that's left is your spirit. And this is what transformed my life. I was trying to see this power of God and this change in my body and in my soulish realm, and I wasn't aware that in the spirit I already was changed. I was transformed when I got born again. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. That's talking about your old man. You don't have an old man anymore. You got a born again nature and your nature is totally changed. You have the same capabilities, the same mind of Christ, the same anointing of Christ. You are identical to Jesus in your spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, I quoted this this morning, but it says, but whoever is joined unto Christ is one spirit. And that Greek word is hes, H-E-I-S, and it means a singular one to the exclusion of another. You are identical to Jesus in your spirit. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, speaking of Jesus, so are we in this world. Not so are we going to be in the future, In the future, your body's going to change and your mind's going to be totally renewed. But in the spirit realm, you are identical to Jesus right this second. When you get to heaven, your spirit's not going to be touched. It's not going to have to be dusted off, cleansed, revived, given a new dose of the Holy Ghost. Nothing's going to have to happen to your spirit. Your spirit's as perfect right this moment as it will ever be in eternity. What's going to happen in eternity is we're going to get a glorified body and a totally renewed mind, and we will be perfect spirit, soul, and body. But right now, your spirit is complete as it will ever be. And in that spirit, there is love, joy, peace. If you were walking in the spirit, you would always have love, joy, and peace because that's the way it always is in the spirit. Anytime you're depressed, anytime you're discouraged, anytime you're fearful, You've solved the problem. You aren't in the spirit. You are letting what you feel dominate you. You aren't walking in the new man. You're walking in the old person. And when I began to recognize these things, it just transformed me. I felt like I was a prisoner to the way I had been. I was an introvert. I was just all kinds of things. And I thought, this is who I am. And did you know what? You, as you think in your heart, that's the way you are going to be. Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you think that, well, I'm just an old drunk, I'm an old sinner saved by grace. If that's what you think you are, well, then you might resist for a while, but after a while, you'll give in if the temptation is still there because after all, that's who you think you are. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But when I saw that I am not an old sinner saved by grace, I was an old sinner, but I got saved by grace and I am now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am in right standing with God. And it also helped me to understand how God could love me. You know, I had this experience that I mentioned the other night where I recognized that my self-righteousness was like a filthy rag and I repented of it. 
and I expected God's judgment, but instead love came over me. And when you quoted Finney, I have quoted Finney many, many times, that it was like waves of liquid love. I just couldn't control it for four and a half months. But after the emotion wore off, I was desperate because I didn't understand what I did to cause it. I didn't understand what I did to make that feeling leave. I didn't know what I had to do to get it back. And I panicked. And God, what do I have to do? And I was trying to meet God in just the physical realm. But when I began to see these things, I recognized that in my spirit, I had that love. The love that I felt emotionally for a brief period of time is with me all of the time, whether I feel it or not. Amen. Man, that transformed my life. I have people come to me all the time and say, would you please pray that God will pour out His love in my life? No, I won't do that. Some people, well, what's wrong with that? Because the Bible says he's already poured out his love. God so loved the world that he gave. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. It's not God that's sitting there controlling the spigot and determining how much love, joy, and peace you have. In the spirit, you've got the fullness of the Godhead in you bodily. Your spirit is full of joy, happiness, anointing, power, faith all of the time. There is never any negative time in your spirit. Your spirit's identical to Jesus as he is in this world. So are you in this world. Your spirit's perfect. So if you don't feel those things, it's because you are in the flesh. You are going by what you see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. And I learned that the key to the Christian life is quitting going by what I feel, by what things look like, and I just hold up the spiritual mirror. And this is how I am, and this, this is who I say I am. And as I conform my thinking to it, well, then I begin to start experiencing all of this benefit. You know, people come up to me and say, how are you? And I say, well, let me see. <laughs> right here, oh, I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings. And I've had people come up and say, oh, I, I know what you're saying, but I want to know how you really are. And I'll tell them, I'm really blessed. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what things are going on. Well, what did the doctor say? I don't care what the doctor says. I'm not against doctors. If it wasn't for doctors, all the Christians would be dead. So I'm not against doctors, but I'm saying that, man, I have pushed past having to go by how my body feels. My body doesn't tell me who I am. I tell my body how it's gonna be. And when I begin to see this, it just transformed my life because I, I felt like I was a hypocrite if I told people that I was feeling the love of God when the truth was I didn't. And I wanted to be honest. I might not be able to be the perfect person I was supposed to be, but one thing I could be is at least not a hypocrite. So I wasn't gonna pretend. And I remember in Vietnam, they had this song it was popular back then about I've got joy like a fountain, peace like a, a river, and love like the ocean in my soul. I'd never sing that because I said I may be a lot of things, but I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not going to say it if I can't feel it. And then I found out what I'm telling you that the whole time I had it in my spirit and I was just being carnal, going by what I felt instead of by what the Word said. And I could have kicked myself. I could have been rejoicing and praising God the whole time, but I was just going by how I felt. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I know that the vast majority of people, this is how you live your life because I deal with a lot of people. I've talked to lots of people here. And I guarantee you there's people that it, they're just trapped, they're dominated, controlled by, this is what I feel. This person said this about me and I feel this way. I'm saying this in love, but that is bondage. You are a slave if your feelings control you. That's a terrible way to live. And yet this is how the vast majority of people live. Their feelings control them. Well, I don't feel love for this person. Well, then your feelings are wrong because the Bible says that you've got the love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart. I was talking to a guy in Charlotte and he, he spit a big old wad of chewing tobacco right in my face and it dripped down my shirt and stuff like this. 
And you know what? I just wiped it off and I never missed a word in the sentence. And I can guarantee you, I didn't feel like doing that. I felt like punching the guy's lights out, but I'm aware that there's another part of me that's beyond just what I feel. And in my spirit, I'm just like Jesus. And if Jesus could turn the other cheek and if Jesus could sit there and let them insult him and pray for those people, well, then I have the capacity for doing that. And I just chose to do it. And when I started living out of the spirit, and finding out who I was in Christ, it just revolutionized my life. Ephesians 4, 24 says, put on the new man, which remember 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Notice you're created righteous. You don't become righteous. You aren't earning righteousness. You were created this way. The moment you get born again, you are as righteous in right standing with God as you will ever be. You're as pure as you will ever be. And some people think, well, man, I can believe that when I got born again, I was like that, but you don't understand. I've messed up again. I've done something wrong. Well, Ephesians chapter one, verse 13 says that once you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And the way that that word sealed is used is talking about like you're vacuum packed. You have a seal around you that keeps impurities from getting into that spirit. Your spirit, when you got born again, was created in righteousness and true holiness. And then boom, you're vacuum packed. And if you sin as a Christian, sin will enter into your physical body and give Satan an inroad. If you've got unforgiveness and stuff, it'll allow sickness to come and you need to confess it and receive prayer. Sin can affect your physical body. It can affect your emotions, but it can't penetrate the seal around your spirit. Your spirit never gets contaminated after you're born again. And some people just freak when I say things like, well, you're just telling people that they can go live in sin. Well, yeah, you can, but you're stupid if you do it. Because it says in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. If you go out and live in sin, Yes, your spirit is saved and it's sanctified, it's separated, sealed, but you are just giving Satan direct inroad into your body. You're yielding yourself to him. And John chapter 10 says that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan is out to destroy you. He's out to make you sick. He's out to make you poor. He's out to make you depressed and fearful. And if you go live in sin, Satan is gonna eat your lunch There you go. Those are our Bible college students. He'll eat your lunch and pop the bag. You don't want to give Satan inroad into your life. But your spirit is sealed. And when I saw this, it just set me free, not to sin, but it set me free from sin. It set me free from the guilt and the condemnation. And instead of running away from God, I ran to God saying, God, You know, it says in John 4, 24, God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. God is looking at me and you in the spirit. And because you're born again and you're a brand new creature in the spirit, he sees you righteous, holy and pure, even when you've sinned. Again, this doesn't set you free to sin because if you go out and live in sin, you're just stupid. Satan's going to take advantage of you. But the point I'm trying to get across is God loves you, stupid. (laughs) Even when you do a piece of stupid, God still loves you. And God is dealing with you in the spirit. And this just set me free because I felt like I was constantly failing to be the witness that I was supposed to be and all of these things. And I just would come before God, oh God, I'm so sorry, I come before you so humbly today. And I would always back in uh, feeling unworthy, but you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. And in your spirit, you aren't unworthy. You are a brand new creature. 
as he is, so are you in this world. You were created in righteousness and true holiness. If you're coming before God just mentioning all of your sins and talking about what a failure you are, you aren't worshiping him in spirit and in truth. You're worshiping him in the flesh. And it says those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not just the better way. It's not the best way. It's the only way. You can't approach God in your own self. I I don't have the words to convey to you what this did to me, but man, it set me free from me. It set me free from all of my weaknesses and everything. I'm a new creature in Christ. And when God sees me, he sees me as righteous and holy and pure as Jesus is. He sees me that I have the mind of Christ, that I have the same anointing that Jesus has. And because of it, the key in the Christian life is renewing my mind so that I begin to have the same identity that God has given me. Again, I'm saying this in love, but most of you, you identify with your past performance, whether it's good or bad, failures, and all of us have had failures, and you place limits and you see this is who I am and this is what I can do. And because of it, you just constantly limit God. But if you could see who you are in Christ and recognize what Jesus has done on the inside of you, I guarantee you it would take the limits off. I'm doing things that I couldn't have done. I was an introvert. I couldn't look at a person in the face. I literally had a man come up to me when I was a senior in high school and he passed me on the street and he said, good morning. And he was two blocks down the street and I was sitting in my car and I finally go, good morning. I was so scared I couldn't talk to people. And now I talk to millions of people every single day. I'm doing things that I could not do because I found out that I'm a different person. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The way that you see yourself, as you think in your heart, that's the way you'll be. And if you get to looking at Jesus and saying, that's exactly who I am, the works that he did, I can do also. And if you meditate on that and think about it, and you get to where you change your identity so that you see that I, it's Jesus in me. I'm capable of anything that Jesus is capable of. You think on that long enough, and you know what? It'll start influencing you. Like I said, nobody taught me about healing. Did you know the very first person I ever prayed for and God healed? I thought that was the first person in 2,000 years that had been healed. In my Baptist church, they said those things had ceased. But when I found out who I was in Christ and I knew that Jesus was in me, I just couldn't help it. I knew that Jesus was just as capable of doing anything today that he had ever done. And I was in the Baptist church and I was teaching a Sunday school class. And they gave me a group of little tiny group, two or three people. And I started teaching. We grew to about 40 people. And I was telling them, I said, if you ever get sick, the Bible says you call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with oil and pray for you. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. I said, don't you dare stay home. You come to church. We're going to pray for you and you'll be healed. And I I said that a number of weeks. And finally, this one girl, never will forget this, Diane Jacoby. She came in and I mean, she was sick. She looked bad. And I looked at her and I said, boy, Diane, you look bad. And she said, you said if I'm sick to come to church. And I said, oh yeah, I did, didn't I? And so I put a chair in the middle and we had all of the other kids get around and I prayed my best prayer for her and commanded that sickness to go. And she had to get up and run out of the room and go throw up. And she went home. And after Sunday school, I went, walked into church and uh, they were starting a praise and worship service. And I was just sitting there thinking, well, God, I did what I knew to do. I said, I don't know what else to do. It doesn't look like it worked. And while they were having the praise and worship service, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and it was Diane. And before she could get home, she was totally healed. And she stood up in front of the Baptist church and told them that Andrew laid hands on me and God healed me. And that was the beginning of the end of me being a Baptist. They didn't like that one bit. 
I didn't know that anybody else had ever been healed, but I just started praying for everything that moved because I knew who I was and what I had. I'm telling you, if you could see, if you understood that you have the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that's what it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. He prays, verse 18, that your eyes would be open to see the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe the same power that He used when He raised Jesus Christ from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and sickness and disease and poverty and anything else you want to name. If you could understand that you have that same supernatural raising from the dead power on the inside of you, you wouldn't be cowing before cancer or before, uh, you know, ALS or, or whatever it is. Nothing. Jesus is exalted above everything. But the problem is most of us are living by the flesh, going by what we see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. We've heard so many people talk about how terrible cancer is, and you magnify cancer more than you magnify God. If you were to magnify who you are in Christ, you'd get to where you could laugh at all of this stuff. It's no big deal. So these things I was teaching today are just absolutely essential to Christian maturity, and you need to get this in its entirety and not just broken into 30-minute segments. So we have the whole conference available on either audio or DVD. Both of these are taken from our conference, and our announcer is going to give you information about how you can receive this product. Learn how to grow in the Lord when you get Andrew's teaching titled, Four Essential Elements of Christian Maturity. Andrew's new series, Four Essential Elements of Christian Maturity, is available as a CD or DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. I want to let you know that we had a groundbreaking for our student housing at Karis Bible College on May the 11th. You can go to our website and find video of that but we are now beginning to build student housing and we have a partnership entitled Foundation Builders that is just specifically dedicated towards building out our facilities here at Karis Bible College. I would appreciate it if you would pray about it and join with me in helping train people to be soldiers in this fight, to go out and help take our nation back and bring people into the kingdom of God. I guarantee you it'll be money well invested so you can check it out, our foundation builders for student housing here at Karis Bible College. When I got diagnosed with the MS, my whole life at that point changed. I tried to receive healing in for probably about eight years straight. Like I felt like I had to receive something. I had to fight and do all these things. When you suffer, then you suffer some more. There's nothing left. There's no will to live. Death actually looks great. That's where I was at. For years, Jeremiah fought multiple sclerosis, a chronic disease with symptoms that include pain, fatigue, difficulty walking, and depression. Though he had seen God deliver him from drugs and alcohol, and though he had seen countless others healed of incurable diseases, Jeremiah reached the point where he just wanted to give up and die. As a heavy drug user, Jeremiah assumed that the symptoms of MS were just a byproduct of his lifestyle. For weeks, he ignored the warning signs until one day, his body began shutting down. I'm walking down the sidewalk and it felt uh, half my body, exactly half my body went numb. So I thought because of the drugs I did and the crazy lifestyle caused me to have a stroke. So that's what got me to the hospital. They had recommended me to go to a specialist, a neurologist. And when he told me the diagnosis, I wasn't sure what that was. So I asked him, I said, well, what, is, what does that mean? And then he started uh, giving some of the details where you'll lose your function of your body. 
when, I, when he told me that, I, I left the office and I just went and got some alcohol. And it didn't hit me until I realized that I, I couldn't continue in the lifestyle I was in and I didn't know how to get out of it because I was hooked on all this stuff. Years after I got diagnosed with uh, MS, I ended up in a rehab and I got saved and set free from drugs and alcohol, but I still had this incurable disease, multiple sclerosis. But I ended up in a nursing home. I had lost all strength and I was getting super weak, so my muscle tone was really gone. Uh, everything that I used to be able to do, I couldn't really do anymore. They had put me on disability because of the MS, so I had all the time in the world. To and I was sitting in, my, sitting in my bedroom one night, and I asked God, I said, I need a teacher. And so I said, God, we have the internet. What, what teacher should I, I listen to? And he led me to Andrew all night. Today, I'm gonna begin a brand new series talking about God Wants You Well. So I started listening to God Wants You Well, all these different teachings. My mind had gotten renewed from its old way of thinking of drugs, alcohol, by listening to Andrew's teachings, but I had had this uh, incurable disease that I, I just couldn't seem to, to get to, to go away. When this healing thing wasn't working after so many years, it just kept making me more bitter and, and hope deferred made, made my heart sick. And the last thing I told God, I said, I'll try everything that I can do to receive healing. God has already provided everything that you ever will need and you just rest in this. You trust Him. I uh, stayed so focused on Jesus and His love for me that I didn't realize my symptoms were fading away. And when I just quit and turned to God and asked Him for help, and that's when my healing came. Did you hear about our website? We designed it with you in mind. Now you can browse on all your mobile devices. Everything is where you would expect it to be. And if you can't find something, the search bar will. It's fast, easy, and it just makes sense. Check it out at awmi.net. You know, my whole ministry is just about encouraging people to take the seed of God's Word and let it work in your heart. And of course, we do that through television, through materials that we put out. But the greatest way we have of impacting anybody is our Caris Bible College. I tell you, it is discipleship on steroids. We see people come in one way and leave a different way. I promise you that this could change your life. So check out our Caris Bible College with many locations around the world. We are now enrolling for fall and spring semesters. Visit discovercaris.com or call 719-635-1111 to find out more about the Caris experience. Caris Bible College, change your life, change the world. I wanna let you know that we have now started a Caris Daily Live Bible Study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's gonna really be good. We're gonna use our instructors from the school, and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis Daily Live Bible Study, five days a week. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? We pray that we can bless you with the Word of God wherever you are in the world on any of these platforms. Follow Andrew on social media today.